Hey there, uh, this is Blake coming at you with a deck profile. Um, over this past weekend, um, I ended up taking first place at an invitational event, Circuit Series at All Access, which is a local store here in the Green Bay area in Wisconsin. Um, I took it with Vanquish Soul. I just kind of wanted to put a profile out there. I think All Access should be having a profile coming up soon too, if you want to go and check it out there. Um, I just want to give my two cents about this deck in the current format and how I think it stands. Um, I'll talk more about that at the end, but I just want to start off by giving a few shoutouts. Firstly to um, Team Tempo itself. We're a group of buddies here in Appleton that kind of been playing the game together for a while now and um, trying to boost each other up and help each other out for um, getting prepared for events and especially nationals coming up soon. Um, I also want to give a huge shout out to everyone in Green Bay. Um, a lot of cool people out there, uh, made a lot of new friends, um, and the store owner at All Access, John, especially, he's uh, the most supportive store owner I've ever seen, especially for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, um, being a player himself, so I really appreciate all he's done for me and um, the community as well. Um, so the winnings of the event, um, we got a box, some OTS packs, this awesome playmat, Thank you again. And uh, a belt to symbolize um, being a champion for the Circuit Series, which includes free entry to local tournaments and percentage off in the store. Um, <clears throat> so a really cool prize support being a free uh, tournament itself. So huge up to uh, John for that. Um, let's get into the deck profile, though, and I'll talk a little bit more about why I think uh, Vanquish Soul is a really good pick for this format in general. So starting off, um, we have the bread and butter of the Vanquish Soul deck, Three Raisin. Um, he's your go-to for searching monsters as well as uh, interacting with um, column-based mechanic monster destruction. Then we have Two Mad Love. Um, this is your spell searcher. Also, it's got a sneaky effect and damage step to reduce attack and defense, get over things. Um, and then you can do that in damage step, which is pretty sick. Also, he's got a non-targeting bounce for the lowest defense monster on the field. Then we got Pantera, uh, not really that good, but it's a free extender when you don't control monster in the main monster zone. Also, it's really good in the trap matchup to destroying uh, certain kinds of floodgates or any kind of back row removal before making a push. And level four, which is and Earth, which is the main reason why you play here. Those are all the little bodies of Vanquish Soul. Then going on to the bigger bodies, this is the second best Vanquish Soul in the deck is uh, Jalong. You only need two. Uh, because you'll search one, and then if you start with one in hand, you'll search the other one to then search two cards during both your turn and the opponent's coming up turn. Um, you could play three. I did play three at one time, but I found it's more consistent to play two, so that's why we play two in the main. It's also got a little hidden effect with uh, changing monster non-targeting to defense position or attack position, just changing battle position in general. So. It's a really cool tactic when you have Baguska and you want to turn it to attack, but then still have the defensive option of him in defense. Um, so you can, like, you know, do your attacks, and then at the end of the turn or during your opponent's turn, you can swap to defense and uh, proceed to floodgate him out with Baguska. <clears throat> then we have our protectors for our normal summon or special summon of Raisin. And they are the Bounce Effect Big Boys. That's two Valius, which is your boss monster in the deck, non-targeting destruction, and protection from activated effects of your opponent. Borger, he's your burn in time guy. Also adds consistency to the deck by revealing a dark just to draw a card. Both of these can target a Vanquish Soul monster that's not the same type. Bounce it to hand and special summon himself. So good for dodging the more common cards in the format, being Impermanent Valor, as well as Mortar. Then we have the honorary Vanquish Soul Fenrir. It's no longer Cashier Fenrir in this deck. Um, he's uh, your bread and butter extension piece. Uh, I mean, starting piece, and he presents a threat on field just by himself. Adds either the attribute of Earth or Fire to the deck. Um, and this Fire piece also is an extension into a rank 4 Xyz play, uh, if need be. So, very good package there. Then we go into the non indigent hand traps. Probably one of the main reasons why you would play this deck is because it's good against fire, being that D shifter can straight up win you games. It's also a dark, so when it's a dead card in hand, it allows for a good attribute uh, to reveal. 
a bank control itself um, doesn't really care for playing under this, so it's not really optimal. But that being said, if it hurts your opponent more, you should definitely run this in the main deck. At one point I wasn't, and that's a huge mistake. Um, then we play three Ash. Um, for this event, there was a few branded players at the local scene, and I was hoping to dodge them, which I did. But in case I didn't, I wanted this in the main deck for that matchup. It's also really good to reveal a fire, um, and this is more universal hand trap of the format anyways. Then we have one Magnemut. Um, I mean, self-explanatory. Always going to be good, even in the Snake Eye matchup, hitting SP, hitting Link Karibo. Um, in the Fire matchup, I mean. Um, against Dragon Link, it's pretty solid. It's got options to both search Valius in this deck and then a little tech card, which is Tiamatan. So I played Tiamatan and it actually did me really well this tournament. Uh, won me a game in the first game of my finals match. Um, where basically you can in this deck manipulate columns pretty easily if you get this card uh, going first um, you can lock out the extra monster zone of your opponent um, while maintaining a rock in your extra monster zone so they have very limited in engine outs in the fire deck um, the in engine out that comes to mind would be flame burge uh, targeting and putting it into the back row but typically you would just be able to easily pop that with valius at that point and they can't beat over it by battle most of the time because if they if you have a body that's um, big on the field, you can basically force them to interact with that big body um, by Rock saying you must attack a Vanquish Soul monster with the highest attack on the field. So he's really good to floodgate your opponent out. He's an extension piece level 4. He's zero defense, so Mad Love can easily bounce this back to hand to reveal and then special summon during your opponent's turn and blow up another column. I think this is one a uh, really underrated piece um, in the deck, and I think it's worth trying out. Um, I was on two before, but I think adding Magnumut to the deck allowed me to comfortably just keep one into the deck. Um, and I think it's a, a worthwhile spot. <clears throat> Then, going on to the spells, uh, for the extension and consistency cards, we have Stake Your Soul. Uh, it's the absolute best for uh, not committing to a normal summon and be able to special summon a uh, Vanquish Soul monster from your deck is, you know, it's E-Tally right there. So, then, if you can play 3 Pot of Prosperity, you play 3 Pot of Prosperity because this digs 6 deep, both sides going first. Also, going, um, going first in game 1, it allows you to dig more ways into Raisin or any other card you would possibly need, which mostly is Raisin, possibly Fenrir. The last three consistency cards are two Durandal and one Rota. Um, Durandal becomes better the more free bodies that you have um, to special summon. It's also okay going second, equipping to your opponent's monster, but I might cut this to one in the future, um, depending on what we see for the support of this deck. And then Rhoda, obviously, you get to Raisin, so. Um, and then we have the spell blowout cards, um, which are the three Gravekeepers inscription. I would say at some points, if not all points, this might be even a better card than um, D-Shifter. The only thing that D-Shifter provides more than this is that it's a dark attribute to real in hand. It can be used turn zero. But what Gravekeeper's Inscription does is it allows for flexibility in matchups, like if you versus Dragon Link or a Dragon deck in general, you can call No Banishing from Graveyards for two turns. Um, if you verse the common Snake Eye variant, uh, Snake Eye decks, you would just say No Activating Effects in Graveyard. And it becomes a sort of floodgate um, in that in that sense. And I think uh, along with the engine being able to break boards by itself, um, this allows for diminishing their follow-up plays, um, as well as if you go first and you play this, it's, it's GG. Um, so there's that. And then lastly, our last blow card is Call by the Grave. It's really good into the voiceless voice if they do the link summon play to activate the trap during your opponent's turn on the draw phase where you hit uh, the monster, not the link monster that's activating the effect, but the monster that they're targeting is special summon. <clears throat> um, which would be the uh, the voiceless uh, uh, ritual monster. That way you negate his effects on field, and then on top of that, um, prevent the summon in the first place, so low won't be able to special back from grave. Um, 
but it's also really good in the snake eye matchup, hitting flame burge, or going first, protecting you from a hand trap, maybe like a drool. Um, lastly, two engine requirements being the spell and the trap. Um, I feel it continues just good extension piece, also enables you to do rank plays, and then this is one of, if not the best card in the entire deck, especially if you can hold on to this for an entire turn and use it for your fourth or fifth turn, it just puts so much pressure on the field. So uh, I was thinking about maybe even siding a second one for the, the grind matchup. And that is it for the main deck. Um, 40 cards exactly. Then we go on to the side and the extra. Starting off with the extra, we got three rocks, um, bread and butter. You probably don't need three, but in case you're versing like a, you know, cashier or unicorn and they're smart, they'd probably rip a rip a rock from your dexter deck. Um, so definitely a, a must. <laughs> then we have the SP Phoenix Hita. And then going into the future, I'd probably cut Hita. Don't know what I'd replace it for, but um, if you kept her in, you should probably make a higher link monster on into your extra deck. Like make room for it, probably like a uh, underworld goddess. But these have always come up, mostly Phoenix. Uh, SP is okay though for this deck. Um, Rock can't be used as link material, so that's why she's not that good. Um, Alexaton, I just got this added to the deck, but I haven't used it yet, so I can't really say much on it. Um, Battle and Boxer gets you out of sticky situations. Um, Abyss Dweller, it's pretty good if you have a free way to uh, rank up um, during your first turn. Typically, I don't do rank plays in my first turn. That's why I know what matchup I'm going against because I'm too afraid to nib, and you can always play around nib really easy for summons. Ending just rock jaw long passes for in most scenarios. Paguska, MVP of my rank fours. And we have the Chakanine Borbo into a Zeus line. Speaking of, we got Zeus, um, and then another way into Zeus, when you use Fenrir or uh, Borger, you can go into uh, Infinite Track, Mountain Smasher. Basically what he does is he, in the damage step, attaches your opponent's monster as material to it, so it automatically becomes four materials after attacking when you overlay Zeus on top. And then we have the last one, Typhon doesn't come up often, but when it does come up, it's pretty clutch. So. Came up once in this past tournament. Then we have, uh, for our side deck, sorry. We have the, I guess, two DD Crow. Uh, I didn't find Drew Swarm in time, but these would be Drew Swarm because it doesn't conflict with, like, D Shift or uh, presents a body to the field. DD Crow does have versatility of hitting uh, matchups such as, like, Pearly, where Drew Swarm is otherwise pretty bad. But um, in the future, I would I would definitely play Drew Swarm. Mostly because you're scared, uh, the matchup you're most scared of is branded, and um, this doesn't do any different versus the branded uh, deck than Drew Swarm would. Drew Swarm just adds an additional effect of sending. Then going second, you replace your consistency cards such as Pot of Prosperity and the uh, Equip spell with a uh, Phantasme. Um, basically, digs you deep, also is a Dark Monster and a Dragon Monster to search off a of Magnuma if need be. <clears throat> because you can use him going second against uh, most decks in the format, and then on top of that, um, turn uh, turn that they special summon IP from fire decks. Um, you can also do this because they don't need a link summon, they just need a special summon a link monster. Uh, three Cosmic Cyclones, um, necessary this format. I think it's the best form of back row removal. You don't really care about the burn for 1,000 effect as much into time because as long as you're playing in the main phase you have ways to burn and then lastly the one harpies <clears throat> uh, we have three dark ruler for pure snake eye matchup sometimes I put this into fire king snake eye matchup as well it's also good against uh, um, pretty much any combo deck obviously just a blow up card uh, allows you to break boards easy when they can't even activate their monster effects um, so that's good and then going first, the uh, side deck card of choice is Anti-Spell. Originally I was playing Summon Limit, but I realized that it is not as good as Anti-Spell. Anti-Spell just trades with more cards, um, beats blowout cards like Eva, uh, Lightning Storm if they try to call back row, which they would against this deck in particular, just to beat the one-for-one -one trade of Snow Devil. Also, um, Combat's Dark Ruler, which is also a pretty common card to side going second in general. 
Um, I think it would be all right against Vanquishful, not the best. And also is the way better option than um, Summon Limit versus the Branded matchup. Because on a Branded, if they're smart, they'll make a play into Boar Load. I think it's Furious Dragon to out certain Floodgates before committing to their entire play because Summon Limit is such a um, common card this format. Um, so now, I guess matchup-wise, and the reason why I'm overall playing this deck in the first place um, is because I think Vanquish Soul has a very good matchup into the Snake Eye Fire King and Snake Eye decks. I've had somewhere around, I don't even know, 14, 15 matches in real life with this deck against Snake Eye variants, and I've lost one so far, and it was at a local scene against the person I played it. Uh, played in finals actually um, I just think it's got too good of a matchup to ignore I just think people don't know that yet because it's not a very common deck to see but as more people play it you might realize that as well it's also very good because it has strong matchups into the um, rogue matchups of stun decks flu decks um, <clears throat> what is the uh, Horus decks and uh, I mean, anything Cash Tira related as well, it's always had a good matchup against. So I think, like, that being said, it's only a difficult matchup, realistically, has always been branded. So if you can find ways in your side deck to eliminate that problem or uh, try to dodge it like I did, I think you'll find a lot of success with this deck. So I just wanted to um, give a huge shout out again to everyone that supported me in playing this deck in the first place. It's um, Drake. Drake is a a huge reason and probably the biggest supporter of me playing this deck so shout out to you in utah um that's about it that's all i want to share on today and uh team tempo out